think about it. There's nothing in this world oh my we God. can't do. Oh my God. Flowers even mad about it. Hello everyone, it's me Ella and the PC build video that I've been talking about for so long is finally here. So I chose all of my parts using PC Part Picker. If you want to see my PC Part Picker list, then I will have a link to it down below. And this is actually my very first time building a PC, which is pretty exciting. This PC will not be just for gaming, but it will also act as my storage and file server for my personal files, as well as my YouTube things. And it will also be my editing workstation. I will have all of my PC parts linked down below, so you can go check those out if you're interested and with all that being said let's just get right on into this video For the CPU, I decided to go with the Intel Core i5-11500. It is the current gen Intel CPU, so I get PCIe Gen 4, which is great because that'll give me better expandability and the ability to use very fast SSDs. Originally, I was planning on getting the AMD 5600X, which is the cheapest current gen AMD CPU, but the issue is that one doesn't have any integrated graphics, and currently I also can't get my hands on the GPU that I want, so that means that I would have to buy a cheap GPU as a temporary stand-in, even if I just want to use my PC as a simple file server. The 5600X and a cheap GPU will be quite pricey, nearly double the price of the 11500. Now, as for the 11500, it does have integrated graphics, so I wouldn't need to spend extra money on a cheap stand-in GPU. I also did consider the 11400, but the 11500's integrated graphics is actually about 30% faster than the 11400's, and since I probably will be using the integrated graphics for a while, I thought I might as well just get the faster one since it only costs like 30 bucks more. I am not a hardcore gamer, and my editing is not that heavy on the CPU, so a 6-core CPU should be enough for my needs. For now, I'm just using the stock cooler, but later on I might get a bigger CPU cooler, which would allow me to unlock the power limit on the CPU, which could be beneficial for my editing. Okay, so for the motherboard, I got the MSI B560 Pro VDH Wi-Fi. I went for the 500 series because I want the ability to use PCIe Gen 4 SSDs and also to connect to my GPU at full speed. When I was looking at motherboards, I specifically wanted Wi-Fi and 2.5 gigabit LAN so that I can quickly transfer footage on my MacBook to this PC and perhaps even edit footage stored on this PC directly from my MacBook. And this motherboard was one of the cheapest ones that satisfied all of my requirements. As for the GPU, I really want to get the RTX 3060 Ti, but I've been trying to get it for the past few months and I've just had no luck at all. It's always, always out of stock for me, but I think this GPU will be fantastic for playing games, even really heavy ones like the Microsoft Flight Simulator. It will also be super fast for rendering out videos, definitely much faster than my 16 inch MacBook Pro, which by the way is already very fast. So this GPU you will definitely be very fantastic and I really hope that I can get it soon. For the RAM, I went with the G-Skill 32GB kit at 3200CL16. I specifically chose 32GB of RAM because I will be doing editing on this PC and editing can definitely take up a lot of RAM. I also think that this kit has really good value for its latency. Originally, I actually wanted some fancy RGB RAM, but when I was looking, RGB RAM was just a lot more expensive than non-RGB RAM and I decided that the RGB wasn't really worth it. 
it. I went with 512 gigabytes of NVMe SSD from Adata. Now, I am aware that Adata has done some very shady things, like downgrading the performance of their drives after they have come out. However, this drive that I got was really cheap, perhaps due to the bad press, and it is by far the cheapest Gen 3 NVMe SSD with triple level cell and onboard DRAM cache, which means that it will most likely be fast enough for everything that I want to do on my PC, and it will also have decent longevity. I plan on using this SSD as the boot drive and also to store some files on it. For mass storage, like my photos and videos that I definitely have a lot of, I do have a hard drive. Mine is the Iron Wolf 4TB one. I probably will add more SSD in the future since I do want to edit on this PC, but I don't need to do that right now because one of the great things about PCs is that I can easily upgrade and add to it whenever I need to. Okay, so for the case, I got the Fantex Eclipse p 300 a mesh case and I think this case is an absolute steal. I love this case so much. It is definitely on the cheaper side but it doesn't look or feel cheap at all. It has a big tempered glass panel. How do I open this? It should pull towards the screw like it should slide in that direction. Do you see the handle in the middle? Oh my god. Yeah there you go. Okay and two internal bays <gasps> where the HDD and SSD can go. <laughs> <laughs> this is accessories box. The other great thing about this case is that it should have really good thermals because the front is mesh. And the only downside I would say is that it only has one included fan in the back. So I would probably need to buy more fans in the future, especially as I begin to use this PC for editing. Lastly, for the power supply, I went with the EVGA 650 watt fully modular power supply. 650 watts should be all that I need for my CPU and GPU, and I specifically chose a fully modular option because it being fully modular just makes it so much easier to cable manage. Oh my god, what is this? Okay, something happened. Yeah, that's the BIOS. Welcome. So, what do I do now? Did I do it right? Yeah, you did it right. I did it right? Yeah. I did it right! Okay, so yeah, that was my PC build. I would say my PC is definitely not flashy looking at all. It has nothing RGB inside of it, but I actually do like how minimal and simplistic it looks. So yeah, I hope that you guys like this video. Of course, now my next step is to set up and customize Windows. And of course, I will be filming that process. So a Windows setup and customization video will be coming very soon. If you don't want to miss that, then be sure to subscribe to my channel down below. I also have have a few links down below, my Instagram and also my Amazon page, which contains both my YouTube gear and also my tech setup. So go check those out if you're interested. And that's going to be it for this video. I really hope to see you in another one of my videos. Bye!